If you're watching this, odds are you've got a Galaxy device, maybe an S9, S9 Plus, Note 9, or even something older like the S8. And hey, let me ask you, have you ever stopped to think about this? Why are these phones still stuck on Android 9 or 10? And you're probably wondering, is this thing really as outdated as Samsung wants me to think? See, even today, these devices can still handle most apps without breaking a sweat, but it's almost 2025 and your phone is still running software from years ago. Meanwhile, an iPhone from the same era is getting all the shiny new updates. That's got to sting a little, doesn't it? Samsung's newer devices now boast up to 7 years of updates, which is amazing for them. But these older Galaxy legends? Forgotten. Left behind. Thankfully, the Android underground is here to save the day. These devs from XDA, they're like the Batman of Android, swooping in with custom ROMs to breathe fresh life into your old Galaxy. So, in this video, we're diving into One UI 6.11, based on Android 14, specifically for the Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, and Note 9. And if you're rocking a Galaxy S8 or S10, don't worry. I've got guides for those on my channel too. Now, before you hit me with, just get to the point, Relax. I've dropped chapters in the description so you can skip straight to the parts you care about. But if you're here for the full experience, stick around. I'm breaking down everything you need to know. What works, what doesn't, and whether it's worth making the jump. And hey, before we get started, could you do me a small favor? Consider subscribing. It won't cost you a thing, but it will mean everything as I push to hit one of my big 2024 goals, 10,000 subscribers. And with your help, I know we can make it happen. Thank you so much. Let's be real. The Galaxy S9 series and Note 9 weren't just good. They were great. Sleek designs, top tier cameras for their time, and features like iris scanning and the S Pen that honestly felt way ahead of the curve. And now, running one UI 6.1.1 on these devices, it's honestly impressive. The new UI feels modern, smooth, like it doesn't even belong on a phone this old. Sure, there's the occasional jitter, mostly in the animations, but overall, this feels way fresher than it has any right to. Now let's talk functionality. First up, boot up time. It's quick. No, really. I didn't notice any sluggish startups across any of the models. And the camera processing? It's pretty much on par with the stock firmware. Look, don't expect mind-blowing improvements, but hey, it's solid. Just check out these samples. But yeah, here's the downside. Portrait mode? It won't work. That's a bit of a bummer. Battery life? Oh, you're gonna love this. The standby time is phenomenal. This ROM squeezes every last drop of juice from your battery. Seriously, you can set the phone down for hours and still come back to a respectable charge waiting for you. And performance? Let's be real. This isn't a magic wand. You're not suddenly turning your S9 into an S24 Ultra. But here's the good news you're not losing performance either. Everything feels about the same as stock Android 10, which for a phone this old is a win in my book. With this custom ROM running One UI 6.1.1, you're getting modern features straight from the newer Galaxy devices, like that handy circle to search feature. Just hold the home button for a second and voila. Options pop up, helping you search and find info instantly. And the best part, you've got Galaxy AI baked right into everything, calls, chats, transcription in the voice recorder, and even drawing assist in the Galaxy editor. Plus, you get the latest always on display, lock screen customizations, sketch to image with Galaxy AI, basically all the cool stuff you see in the newer Galaxy phones. It's all here. Let's talk customization. The options are insane. You can grab patch APKs like good lock, and seriously, you can customize to your heart's content. With good lock, you can take things to the next level. Personalize everything, from keyboards to AI-generated wallpapers. Oh, and the Bixby key? It's been remapped to trigger Gemini, with Gemini Live features that feel straight out of a flagship phone. This ROM, it honestly makes your Note 9 feel like a modern Galaxy S24. It's that good. New wallpapers, fresh fonts, oh, and the ability to load up any APK your heart desires? Yeah, that's all here. And hey, if you ever regret your decision or miss the simplicity of stock Android, don't worry. You can easily roll back to the original firmware without much hassle. But you know, no free lunch, right? There are a few sacrifices. First off, iris and face scanning not working. So if those are your thing, this ROM might not be for you. You'll have to rely on the fingerprint sensor or the good old pin. And for all the Note 9 users out there, 
the S Pen's Bluetooth features, gone. You won't be able to control your phone with that S Pen button anymore. But don't worry, writing and using the pen for regular tasks still works perfectly fine. Now, the banking app situation? It's a bit tricky. Some work fine, others are a little picky. It really depends on the app's policy about modified devices. But honestly, if you're just using your phone for basic stuff, you won't hit too many walls. And then there's Knox. Yep, you lose that. And that means features like Samsung Pay and Secure Folder will be gone. So if you're using your phone for work stuff, especially anything that requires high security, you might want to think twice. But if you are just a regular user looking for a refresh, this might be an easy trade-off. At the end of the day, the choice is yours. Signal strength, no issues there. And random restarts, nope. The only real pain point? Those niche features like iris scanning or the S Pen's Bluetooth tricks. So it all comes down to your preferences. So once you try it out, drop your feedback below. Help others weigh the pros and cons. Let's get started. Oh, and first things first, this will only work on the Exynos models. Oh, and heads up, this procedure will erase everything on your device. So make sure to back up your data. Got it? Cool. Now, for this method to work, you need to be on the latest available stock firmware, Android 10 with One UI 2.5. And don't forget, charge your phone before diving in. Anything above 50% should be good to go. Lastly, you'll need to download all the files I've linked in the description. These include both the essential files and some optional goodies. It's totally up to you if you want the extras. Just make sure you grab the necessary ones and have them saved on your machine. All right, first things first, turn your Wi-Fi on. Head over to settings, then tap on software updates and check for any updates. If there are updates available, go ahead and install them. Trust me, this will save you from any issues later on. Next, go to About Phone in the Settings menu. Tap on Software Information and then tap the build number seven times. This will unlock the developer settings for you. Once that's done, head back and find developer settings in the settings menu. Got it? Perfect. Now tap on it and enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. You'll see a warning when enabling OEM unlocking. Just go ahead and confirm. This might reset your device to factory settings, but don't worry, this is part of the process. If your device doesn't give you the option to reset, that's fine. As long as the OEM unlock toggle is on, you're good to go. For those who see the reset option, let your device factory reset and reboot. When it boots back up, go back to developer settings and you should see that your device is OEM unlocked. Great. Now turn off your device completely. Grab your data cable and your laptop. We're about to enter download mode. Here's how. Hold your phone, press and hold the Bixby button and the volume down button at the same time and then connect your cable to the phone. This will trigger download mode. Once the screen pops up, press the volume up button to continue. Press it again to boost the brightness. Now, switch to your laptop. Go to the folder where you downloaded your files and extract the Odin file. Once extracted, open the folder and launch the Odin EXE file. When Odin starts, you should see your device connected. Check for the indicator to confirm. Next, click on Options and turn off Auto Reboot. Then, click on AP, locate the TWRP recovery file in your folder and select it. Let me interrupt you here for a quick note. The recovery file I've chosen here is specifically for the Note 9. If you're using a Galaxy S9 or S9 Plus for this procedure, make sure to download the relevant file for your device. Just check out the description and grab the one that matches your model. Now you can continue. Good. Now hit Start in Odin. You'll see the recovery flashing process begin and in just a few seconds, it'll be done. When the process is complete, you'll see a pass message on the Odin screen. And that's it for Odin. Now, let's boot into the TWRP recovery we just installed and continue with the next steps. Here's how. Press and hold all the buttons together. As soon as the device powers off, release the volume down button, but keep holding the rest. Then, the moment you see the Samsung logo, release the power key, but keep holding volume up and the Bixby button. Wait a few seconds, and there it is, the TWRP recovery logo. 
Once you see that, you can let go of the remaining buttons. Great job, now you're in TWRP recovery. Once in TWRP, tap on wipe, select format data and type yes to wipe the device. This step will decrypt your phone's storage, making it visible on your computer screen. Next, go to your downloaded files folder on your computer and copy the patch TWRP file into your phone's internal storage. Done? Perfect. Now back to your phone, tap on install, locate the file you just copied and swipe right to flash it. This process might take a few minutes, so hang tight. Once it's done, reboot your device back into recovery mode, just like you did earlier. When your device boots into recovery again, go back to your files folder on your computer and copy the universal repartitioner file into your device's internal storage. Then, just like before, head back to your phone, tap on install, choose the file and swipe right to flash it. This time, once the flashing is complete, your device will automatically reboot into recovery mode. You'll notice now that your phone's storage is no longer visible on your computer screen. Yep, we need to wipe it again. So, go to wipe, select format data, type yes, and let the device wipe itself clean. This will bring back your phone's storage on the computer screen. Now, if you run into any trouble copying files or anything else at this point, don't worry. Just reboot your device into recovery mode again and that should fix any issues for you. Now, copy the cleaner file into your phone's internal storage and flash it the same way. Once the file is flashed, your device will reboot itself back into TWRP recovery. And that's it, you're doing awesome. Keep it up as we move to the next steps. Once your device reboots, it's time to go back to your downloaded files folder on your computer. This time, copy the ROM file to your phone's internal storage. Keep in mind, this might take a few minutes, so hang tight and wait for it to finish copying. All right, once the file is copied, head back to install in TWRP. Find the ROM file you just transferred, tap on it, and swipe right to start the installation process. Now, you'll see a setup wizard pop up. Toggle on the switch, then tap next. On the next page, select clean install and again, tap next. Here's where things get specific. On this page, choose the rest of the world CSC, then tap next. Now select your country's CSC. Don't see your country on the list? No worries, just do a quick Google search to find the right code and select it. Tap next to proceed. Now we're at the advanced deployed screen. Tap on it, then tap next. On the next few screens, remember, whatever you toggle on won't be installed. So customize these options based on your preferences. Or if you want, you can follow the same choices I make here. Just tap next after each selection. Next up, the build prop tweaks. Again, make your selections or follow my lead, then tap next. On the CSC tweak screen, choose what you'd like to apply. This part is entirely up to you. Tap next once you're done. And here's a fun one. You can actually remap the Bixby button to anything you want. Once you've made your choice, tap next. Now on the system extra options page, it's time to get creative. Choose options like the AI editor, dex mode, or even a custom boot animation. Read through the options carefully, decide what works best for you, and then tap next again. On the next screen, I recommend selecting clean magis for root. Why? Because if you skip this, your banking apps might not work. For the remaining options, I'll leave them as they are. Once you're ready, tap next. And there we go. The installation process will now begin. This might take around 5 to 10 minutes. So sit back, relax and let it do its thing. When it's done, tap next, swipe and reboot your system. That's it for the recovery part. Now just be patient at the boot screen. It'll take another 5 to 10 minutes before you reach the welcome screen. Once you're there, pass through the generic setup steps. Be sure to allow USB storage access since we'll be transferring a few files again. Finally, check your Android version in the About Phone section of the settings. And congratulations, you've just installed Android 14 with one UI 6.11 on your old Galaxy Note 9. How awesome is that? 
Next up, connect to your Wi-Fi and tap on the Magisk app to get it installed properly. Once it downloads completely, open it up. Now, whenever you see this pop-up, make sure to tap cancel every time. After that, go into settings within the Magisk app and enable these two options. Once that's done, go back and tap on modules. You'll notice that the Play Integrity Fix module is already installed. Now let's move on to the optional apps. If you're interested in installing them, start by copying the files from your laptop to your phone's internal storage. Select all the files on your laptop screen, paste them into your phone, and then open your file manager on the phone. Locate the files you just transferred. Here, you can directly install the APK files. Start with the GoodLock app. Just tap on it and install. Once that's done, go ahead and install the other APK files one by one. Take your time and make sure each one installs properly. If you find any additional APKs online later, you can install them in the same way. Now, for the files labeled as modules, these need to be installed through either the Magisk app or TWRP recovery. Let's start with Magisk. Open the app, tap on modules, then choose install from internal storage. Find the module files you transferred earlier, tap OK, and the installation will begin. But sometimes things don't go as planned. If the installation fails, don't worry. We'll do it through TWRP recovery. Before we jump into TWRP, there's a quick step to handle. Go into your settings and search for play. You'll see Google Play Store and Google Play Services. For both apps, go into their settings and wipe the storage data one by one. This step is crucial, so don't skip it. Now, head back to Magisk and tap the option to reboot into TWRP recovery. Once your phone boots into TWRP, go to install, locate the module file and swipe right to flash it. Let it finish installing and then reboot your device. And that's it. Enjoy your Galaxy Note 9 with its brand new software. Experience the speed, the clean UI and all the new features it brings. If you give this a shot, I'd love to hear your feedback, whether it's positive or negative, down in the comments. It'll help others make an informed decision too. You've been watching Connest Tech, and I'll catch you in the next one.